Nigeria has one of the largest postal industries in Africa, with many post offices spread across the 36 states and Abuja. But many of them over the years were plagued with problems, of course, that were abandoned by many Nigerians for the internet. Mm. Things are starting to change now as a result of restructuring in the system. And these are indeed interesting times at the Nigerian Postal Service. Yeah, ultimately, mm -hmm. these changes may see Nigerians going back to NIPOST mm -hmm. one way or the other. Maybe not in the exact way it used to be, but in, in a very different dimension. What can Nigerians make of the new NIPOST? Mm -hmm. So we have in the studio the Chief Executive Officer, Postmaster General, Nigeria Postal Service, Barrister B.C. Adigui with us in the studio. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good Thank morning. Us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Now, what NIPOST, Post Office, <laughs> it was a very, it was a major aspect of public service amongst Nigerians in the 70s, in the 80s, and a little part of the 90s. But from the 2000s, it seemed computer took over everything, email and all of that, and people forgot that uh, Nightpost ever existed. Talk to us. Do we still have uh, the Nightpost? <laughs> well, Nightpost is there, yeah. alive, okay. um, undergoing tremendous um, transformation, mm. repositioning. But let's, let's do a bit of um, historical excursion. Okay. Now, yeah, that post is a microcosm of Nigeria. Mm. It typifies, um, well, the fate of government parasitals. Now, the question I, I always ask people when they talk about is, is Nipo still in existence? I quickly ask them, where's Nigeria Airways? Mm. Mm. Where's Nigeria Fertilizer Company? Where's Nigeria Na National Shipping Line and all of that? Mm. The Nipo is still thriving bears eloquent testimony to the fact that it is still working. However, there's this general <clears throat> misconception, Arenas believe that, because of the advent of what we call destructive technology, which is internet, the post office will cease to exist. No, that's not true. Because what internet has taken away from the post, it has given back to the post in tenfold. And yeah. I explain. Okay. Now, the traditional function of the post is to deliver mails and all of that. But people don't take cognizance of the fact that you are what we call e-commerce, mm -hmm. which is growing exponentially. If you buy stuff online, which power setup, which massive national infrastructure is placed in a better position because of his widespread network to deliver those items, packages, parcels, and what have you, because we're everywhere. Now, the 21st century post office must diversify away from the traditional mm -hmm. monoproduct Functions. organization. <laughs> exactly. The value chain is long. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't forget, in times past, I remember when I was in secondary school, Anytime anybody had a registered letter, it meant that postal order had been sent to him, he would go to the post office to redeem the postal order mm -hmm. and you know, collect cash. Now, we can't do that brick and mortar manual postal order anymore. Because we are leveraging on this same disruptive technology, we are bringing back postal order, this time in the form of electronic money order. Okay. Which means you can go to a post office, send money from Kaduna to Karana Moda, and the beneficiary will just be sent a code, and you go to the post office to, you know, collect money. Now, international but isn't, isn't, isn't that even more complex than, so, than calling someone and transferring monies to the person's account directly? It's, it's not more complex. Okay. Now, if you send money directly, mm -hmm. you want to use bank, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Banks are not in everywhere. Okay. They are limited in reach. And in order to fill that gap, in order to deepen what we call financial inclusion, mm -hmm. we have gone into what is called agent banking. Okay, I was about to ask that. With banks. Okay. Okay. Which means what you can, transactions that you can um, traditionally engage in, in a bank. If you go to any post office where we have started agent banking, you can, you know, so in essence, um, villages and uh, hinterlands are going to benefit more from this kind of service. Oh, oh yes, through because, the agent because look, 
If you look at the demogra demographic architecture of Nigeria, majority of our people live in the rural areas. And because of the cost implication of having branches all over, <coughs> banks are closing shops. And they now want to partner with us because we are just there. Then I was going into remittances. Mm. Nigeria has the largest destination for remittances in Africa. 23 to 25 billion dollars every year. Mm. Now, the cost of transaction is high because the post office is not involved. Now that we are getting involved, not only that we are going to crash the cost of transaction, we are going to widen the reach in the sense that, look, MoneyGram, Western Union, can only use the traditional banks. In villages all over Nigeria where you don't have banks, then you need to use mm -hmm. the, 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 the post office. We also signed a memorandum of understanding with Western Union and MoneyGram in order for us you know, to play in that uh, ecosystem and it will naturally crash the... Now, oh, okay. the most interesting thing that we're doing, mm -hmm. which is why I think <clears throat> I'm here, is that we're having a stakeholders conference today on addressing. Now, government has a responsibility to provide for you. In the United States of America, they said that the pursuit of happiness is the primary responsibility mm. of the government. The, government. the late Chief of Africa will always say that making the greatest good available to the greatest number. Mm. But you can't do all of this if people don't have addresses. Address is that bridge between you <coughs> excuse me, and government services. Address gives you the medium to access government services. What are the basic government services? Passports, driver's license, mm. when you're in emergency, fire service, and all of that. Now, the whole world is buffeted by what we call poor addressing system. It's either you're having addresses that you can't locate, or they describe it in such a way that uh, <laughs> it's not it traceable. Be, it, it, untraceable. <laughs> <coughs> or you have multiple addresses. There's okay. coca in Lupeju, there's coca in Aguda, mm. there's coca in uh, Surulede, there's coca in. Uh, now, what we are bringing to the table, and I need to explain this mm. in a way that Nigerians will understand. Ni Nigerian Addressing Council is saddled with the responsibility of giving addresses to Nigerians. Mm. Local government has a responsibility, as you know, mm -hmm. to name streets and then. But the federal government has a responsibility to come up with standards so that we we'll have uniformity. Mm. And harmony. Okay. And harmony. Yeah. Now, that is the physical aspect of addressing. Mm. But well, how challenging will this be now? Because yeah. if, when you get to some localities, you will see number, for instance, on the street where you is numbered one, two, ten. You will see number three, and the next number you're seeing is nine. You will look for for five, six, seven. You won't see anywhere, and then maybe it is even totally off the street. Mm -hmm. Technology has simplified that. Mm. Okay, we're leveraging on existing and evolving technology, basically Google technology, to give digital address to Nigeria using what we call open location code. Mm. By virtue of that, we have divided Nigeria into 330 billion three meters by three meters grid. Mm. In each three meters by three meters grid, you have a digital address encompassing the state, the local government, and the unique identifier. So why then do you still want to push for a standard addressing system since this uh, app or uh, you know, software to convert, has addressed to the convert problem? the physical with the digital oh, okay. so that you can take advantage of both. Now this is the demonstration I'm talking about. Okay. Here, here we are. Look at it. Mm -hmm. It has been pointed where we are. You will see okay. TVC there. Uh, where unfortunately, we are, uh, we are just the ones seeing this okay. one. So, so just, oh, we'll make it available to you eventually. Mm -hmm. just, Let us see it. Just, <laughs> just, just, just click on claim. Okay. That is claim now. Are they retrieving address? You're claiming an address with postcode. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, oh, oh I, I see. see. This is so the address gets a code. Yes. It has a postcode. Mm. Oh. Now, before I became the postmaster general, what we had was brick and mortar postcode manual covering about 30% of Nigeria. 
now is covering all over Nigeria and is digitalized. Okay. Put your name. All okay. right. All right. <clears throat> Type it. All right. Let me put my own name. Type your name. Okay. Put uh, your son name. Okay. There you are. Then no, put your start, telephone your number. Your name is down here. Okay. Oh, last name is down. Yeah. So you have to cancel this. Put, yeah. your, put your telephone number. Okay. Wow. This oh, is, you can pass it to me. This so I is can. interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. And then... Uh, my is it home, is it home, or, home or office? Uh, home? Oh, okay. Click on, office. Click on, office. Okay. Office, yeah. And yeah. then claim or continue. Okay. Uh, office. Yeah. Continue. Continue claim. Good. Go ahead. Okay. Have claim. Been, it seems I have a claim address. Congrats. Oh. Whoa. That is the digital address of where you are. As easy as that. Oh. Well, leverage on technology. Okay, so how do we make this available to Nigerians? Very well. That's, to that's, understand, that's, that's, that's very to interesting. To understand this. Now, because, now. because what we did now is so simple and mm -hmm. so straightforward. Now, it's, it's LACO 22563. Mm. LACO is Lagos. Okay. Lagos State. Yes. K is Koshofe Local Government. Oh, okay. And 2253 is unique ID, unique to you. Don't, mm -hmm. don't forget, we have taken your telephone number. It's tied to your BVM. Mm. Whoa. Okay? Now, so what? Had this code, how would you be able to use it now to do what? Yeah, that's your address. Okay. If it's your home now, that is the digital address of your home. Now, how can we make this available to Nigerians? This address is free. All you have to do is go to the um, Apple Store or Play Store. Okay. Click on... Um, and I post digital address, mm. download the app. It's free for you because government has responsibility to give you addresses in order to mm. provide for you. Now, what are the advantages of this? Mm. One, we know where you are. Two, bad guys will commit crime under the guise of anonymity because we don't know where they are. Mm. We'll have to think twice. Now, once they register. Once they register. Now, the icing on the cake on this is that we have developed a robust application that would allow us to come to your location to verify this address. Okay. Really? Now, you, you have, this is your digital address. And that, that could be mm. very challenging. Yes. No, it's a simple process. Okay. We'll come to where you are, ask for your details that you have given to us, and our verification agent will look at it, take your picture. Okay that will be automatically uploaded to our database. Okay. Now, what does that do? We will tie that digital address to a physical place. Mm. It's tied to your telephone number. Mm. The truth of the matter is that... And to a face. Look, under the KYC obligation of the banks, before anybody open a bank account for you, they should verify your address. Mm. Under the immigration rule, if you're going to be given a passport, we should know where you stay. And then you wonder why they don't do that. It boils down to not having enough personnel. Does NIPOST have enough personnel verification officers to verify? Interesting Because you have millions of addresses to verify, and the staff strength of NIPOST today is 10,000. Nationwide? Nationwide. 10,000? Yeah, because, mm -hmm. because NIPOST used to be a monoproduct organization until I came. Now that we have diversified, we need to bring in more hands. Okay. Electronic money order is coming. Electronic stamp is coming. Um, our shipping API, oh. application program interface, mm -hmm. that all the big e-commerce giants will integrate with in order for us to be able to deliver to you. The courier companies and all of that. Now, we came up with an idea. Don't forget. When President Mamadou Buhari became president, he campaigned on three major plans. Anti-corruption war, mm -hmm. fight against insecurity, and employment creation. So we came up with an idea. Any young man or woman, Nigerian youth, who has a simple smartphone with internet, mm -hmm. all we have to do is to appoint you as our address verification agent. Okay. It is this young man or woman that will come to you 
give you means of identification. And let's say I'm from Naples. You want us to verify this address for you. Look at your data and all of that. Mm. Because you are going to use this address for commercial purpose, you are just going to pay a token sum of 1,000 Naira as verification fee. Out of that 1,000 Naira, we're going to give that young man 150 Naira as his own fee or commission for verifying that address for us. Mm. Which means, if you have millions of addresses to verify, these young guys will be making money. We have decided in such a way that young Nigerians will be making money more than an Uber driver. Mm. In the first one year, our projection is that we're going to generate in direct jobs about 250 to 500,000. Through so this means. Through this means. So we won an award from the United Nations, International Telecommunications Union, in conjunction with World Summit on Information Society, mm. gave us an award on leveraging on ICT to create e-employment. All right. Mm. As beautiful as this may sound, up until now, Nigerians are not really aware of, of what you're planning and how beautiful this is now. So the mode of communication and engaging Nigerians, for them to be ready to follow and key into the idea and the concept you're bringing on board is another thing. So what's, what's the plan to create awareness, to make Nigerians understand, and when will this commence? Mm -hmm. Well, we already, we, already, we already started. Okay. Part of creation of awareness is what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. And then we have, we've got experts that will work for us. And I've got young guys that have just been recruited who are social media savvy who are leveraging on their expertise who are leveraging on their contacts to do all that now there are some legislative intervention now in order for us to be able to create more opportunities for people to be employed we have embarked on what we call partial commercialization of night posts mm. okay what that means is that we will create five or six subsidiaries for Nipos. One, Nipos Property Development Company, Nipos Real Estate, Nipos um, um, Financial Services, mm -hmm. which is more or less a bank, as it were. Nipos Logistics and Transport. The unbundling of Nipos? Yes. All right. To five companies. To five or six. Mm -hmm. What that means is that. No, I think I have, I have, I have a, a list of them here. Nipos Banking and Insurance Company. Yeah. Nipos Property and Development Company. Yes. Nipos Transport and Logistics Service Company. Yeah. Nipos E Government uh, Service Company. Yeah. And Nipos E Commerce Service Company. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, wow. the idea behind that is that once we do that, mm -hmm. We're going to open up the space. We're going to bring in more people. We're going to be competitive. Look, the 21st century postal administration should be unshackled. Mm. Should not be tied to bureaucratic um, retypism because you want to com compete with the DHL, mm. then you must be pri private sector oriented. And that's what I'm bringing to the table because I'm a commercial lawyer. And the president felt that, look, we need to restructure this massive national infrastructure. Mm. We need to get somebody from the private sector mm. to come and drive it and make money for the federal government. Okay. Mm. However, we must strike a delicate balance. The post remains a social service. Mm. Now, in rendering that social service, we must ensure that the post, the post does not die. We we'll make money whilst not forgetting our social responsibility to Nigerian citizens. Mm. So in, in all of this, I wonder again. whether you're still going to use your offices in the local, because you talked about localities and all those villages. Some of your offices, they are moribund. Some of them are no longer accessible. How, oh. how would you, are you still going to use those facilities? Just and it's going to, we know it's going to cost so much to bring them back to life. Don't forget that we're going to be collecting on 1,000 Naira for address verification. Mm. In commercial terms, that could run into billions of Naira. We will plow back part of that into the upgrade of facilities in all those areas that you have mentioned. Okay. Mm. Deploy technology. Open up the space. Mm. You know, Nigeria is such a massive country. We'll have to do it in phases. What is happening to Nigerian Post is not unique to it. Posts all over the world are having their challenges. And what a 21st century ICT savvy Postmaster General should do is to think out of the box and leverage on the opportunities that are there. 
Make sure you diversify. Moving with the times. Moving with the times. Mm. Okay. Another initiative that I brought to the table, table, which is very interesting, is what we call post youth engagement strategy. Mm. The demographic architecture of Nigeria consists of 65% of youth, mm. roughly translating to 80 to 90 million millennials. Mm -hmm. These are young boys and girls who don't patronize the post because we don't offer them services that will interest them. How do you engage these brilliant young boys and girls? Engage them digitally. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've come up with products that we can only dispense and sell via this device. Once wow. you're able to okay. do that, you'll bring them on board. There's, but, there's, there's but do so you have much. presence, really, on the social media? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because oh, 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 that is where the youths are quite active. Oh, yes. Uh, Nipost.ng, our Twitter handle. These guys that I'm talking about, within two or three days, succeeded in having 14,000 followership. Okay. Well, all right. Okay. We, well, we let's just. Okay. Here, yeah. yeah. Barrister yeah. BC Adigbui, CEO, Postmaster General, Nipost. Thank you very much for coming to us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I, I know we'll have <laughs> other opportunities to talk yes, more on absolutely. this because there's so much, so much for Nigerians to learn when it comes to what you're doing. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. I appreciate yes, it. Well done. Right.